Hello everybody, in this video we will be exploring the properties of exponents. Exponents are one of the operations that we see when we're dealing with the order of operations right underneath our groupings operations. They are one of the foundational operations in mathematics in which you can't move on past Algebra 1 without having a basic understanding of an exponent and its contribution to algebra as a whole. At this point of mathematics, we're just trying to understand the way that we can manipulate algebra using our properties of exponents, and so we already need some type of basic understanding of the exponential operation. We have the first property, which says that anything, anything to the zeroth power is always equal to one. And so what I mean by that is that I can take some number, maybe that number for example is two, I could put it to the zeroth power and that'll equal one. We're used to exponents representing a number that tells us how many times to multiply something times itself. And so what does it mean when we have a power of zero? Well, it's almost telling two to multiply times itself no times why two or anything to the zeroth power is always equal to one but it doesn't matter what it is if i put it to the zeroth power it'll always equal one that's two to the zeroth power that's like we said in the example x to the zeroth power maybe that's two x y z plus one all of that to the zeroth power it's always going to equal one anything put to the power of zero equals one so that's our first power property of exponent is just being familiar with the fact that if I have a zero power, it'll ultimately just drop out and cancel as the number one. The second property of exponent we see deals with negative exponents. And so we don't like negative powers. We consider negative powers oftentimes not to be simplified. And so we need to know how to simplify a exponential expression dealing with negative powers and so how do we do that is we introduce the reciprocal of a fraction and for those of the, you who have gotten to this point in mathematics i assume that we know that a reciprocal flips a fraction for example if i have the fraction two over three i take its reciprocal and i get three over two when i flip it i need to ultimately flip this here some of you are wondering like Hmm, well, that's not a fraction. Technically, anything can be a fraction if you put it over the number one. And so if I imagine that over the number one and I flip it, I would get something that looks like this. Doing that process of flipping it or taking its reciprocal makes my power no longer negative. Now I have a positive power as we see. So we're able to say that something to a negative power is just equal to its reciprocal to the positive power. So what do we mean by that, for example? Let's say again, I have two to the negative third power. So that's again interesting because we're used to taking positive powers. If it was two to the positive three power, I know I would multiply two times itself three times. But what does it mean to multiply two times itself negative three times? Well, ultimately, that's a little bit just like division. We take the reciprocal of two, which is one over two. And now that my two is in the denominator, I can go and make my power positive. So now it's to the third power. And two to the third power, like we said, we know what that is. That's just eight. And so this entire answer is just one over eight. Nice. Let's explore the next property of exponents. So now we have number three and this, these are listed in no particular order. These are just the order that I wrote them in. You can Google any list of properties of exponents and they may have them in a different order. There's absolutely no order of importance. As you'll see when we go to tackle this intimidating looking problem over here, we'll see that you can approach any property of exponent um, that you prefer at any point in time. There is no order of importance. But the third one on my list says something to the m power times some that same exact thing to a different power n, we can combine it um, using simplification. All we have to do is add their power. So that's an interesting technique and it only works if the the two things that I'm multiplying have the same base to their exponent. So what I mean by that is, for example, if I have 2 to the third power, and I want to multiply that times 2 to the fifth power. Well, because the bases are both the same, they're both 2s, I can say, okay, well, this is just going to equal whatever the base was, which in this case was 2. 
to the power that's equal to the sum of the initial two powers. So the initial two powers were three and five. So I'm going to add three and five. That's what we're saying here, where it says m n turns into m plus n. That's what that property of exponents does. And it only works when I have the same bases at the bottom of my exponent base. So for the next one, this fourth property that I have written here is kind of like the third one, but using division rather than multiplication. And so hopefully it makes sense why instead of adding our powers, we will be subtracting our powers. So it says that if I have something to some power m, and I have that exact same thing to a different power n, well then I can simplify them by rewriting them as whatever the base of my power was to the power of m minus n, where we see m was the power in the numerator and n was the power in the denominator. All we're doing is subtracting the powers, kind of like how up above we added the powers. And so let's give an example for that. Let's say I have 2 to the fifth power divided by 2 to the third power. Because the bases are both 2s, they're both the same number, I can use that fourth property there that says this is just equal to 2 to the power of the power in the numerator minus the power in the denominator, which is 5 minus 3. And of course, 5 minus 3 in itself can simplify into another 2. And so we just get 2 squared, which is just 4. That's nice. We wouldn't have known that was a 4 until we applied those properties. The same thing works, and we'll see in just a second, when we get a negative number. Sometimes it intimidates people when we get negative numbers in our powers. So let's just explore that. Let's say instead, instead of 2 to the 5th power divided by 2 to the third power, let's say I have 2 to the third power divided by 2 to the fifth power. Well, what happens now is I have 2 to the power of 3 minus 5, which of course is negative 2. So my new power of 2 is negative 2. And I'm thinking, hmm, I have a negative exponent. What do I do when I have a negative exponent? Well, that's what property 2 is for. Remember, when I have that negative exponent, I take the reciprocal and now the exponent is positive. So I'm taking the reciprocal of the base, which is the number 2. Remember, we can imagine an invisible 1 in its denominator. When I take the reciprocal of the number 2 or 2 over 1, I get 1 over 2. And now this power that was attached to my base, that negative power, no longer needs to be negative. Now it is positive and I get 1 over 2 squared. We know what 2 squared is, it's just 4, and so this is just 1 over 4. And so we see that we can we can subtract these powers and get positives, we can subtract and get negatives, which may lead us into having to use another one of our properties to simplify, because oftentimes we don't just use one of these properties. We'll use one which will lead to another, which may lead to another, and so on and so on, which we'll see in the problem that we have to the left when we address it in just a second. So, let's erase these. Next, we have our fifth property down here. So this one says, when I have something to a power, in this case, my power is m, and I want to put it to another power, in this case, I took that all and I put it to the n power, well, that's really just taking whatever the base of my power is and putting it to the power of the product of both of my powers. That's only when I am powering a power will I multiply the two powers to get my new power. And so, for example, for that, let's say I have 2 to the 3rd power, and I want to put that to the 4th power. Well, according to property 5, that's just 2 to the 3 times 4th power, which is just really 2 to the 12th power. That's a huge number. We don't need to simplify it any more than it is already unless it requests of us, which it doesn't. So we'll just continue to the next one. But that's all that property does there. Now let's explore property 6. So this one here, property 6, when it says now I have two different bases. If you notice for all of the previous properties that we've gotten to up to this point, they've all had the base x. Now we're dealing with a property that allows me to take two different bases, so maybe a number 2 and a number 3. In this case, we have the number x and the number y. And so I can put x and y times each other. When they're multiplying times each other and I put them to a power, it's kind of like we distribute the power. We see that the x and the y are grouped in there um, via multiplication by the exponent m. And so everything inside of that group gets my power m. The x in that group gets my power m and the y in that group gets my power m. And so we end up with x to the m power and y to the m power. What I mean by that is let's say I have 2 times p. 
and I want to take 2p and I want to put it to the third power. Well, I can use property 6 to say that's just 2 to the third power times p to the third power. 2 to the third power, we know that's 8. And p to the third power, well, that's just p to the third power. And so there we have it. We have our answer, just 8p to the third power. Now, last but not least, we have our seventh property. Sometimes you'll see an eighth property, but it's not used as commonly. It's the radical root property when we're dealing with fractional exponents. Um, and in that one, we can explore that in another video. But the seventh property is kind of like the sixth property where we distribute the power inside of the group. But this time we're distributing the power to the numerator and the denominator in the group. And so an example of that, let's say I have two x over three and i want to put all of that to the fourth power well i have to distribute that fourth power to the numerator and the denominator distributing it to the numerator well what's in my numerator i have 2x so 2x gets put to the fourth power i make sure to put parentheses to group it together don't i don't want it to look like the x is only applied to the four so i make sure to put parentheses here um, and in the denominator, we just have 3 to the 4th power. I don't need parentheses there because the 3 is all by itself. There's nothing to be grouped together. It's pretty obvious that the 4 applies to that 3. W versus in the numerator, we notice the 4 needs to apply to the 2 and the x, and that wouldn't be obvious unless we put the parentheses there, in which that's why we did so. And so now let's simplify. What are we seeing? Well, I see in the numerator, there's something going on. The denominator, it's a little simpler. Let's go and write that out. The denominator we see is just three to the fourth power, which is of course just 81. In the numerator, what do I have here? I have two x to the fourth power. And so I'm gonna need another one of these properties of exponents to help me simplify that. Which property of exponents allows me to take two different things inside of a set of parentheses to a power and to simplify that hopefully you all thought of property six property six says i can have something times another thing inside of a group to a power and all i have to do is apply that power to the first thing in my group and apply that power in the second thing in my group as long as they're multiplying together and so we can kind of imagine that the x here represents two and this x here represents the y and the four that we have here represents our m and so on and so on and using that logic we can say well this must be two to the fourth power times x to the fourth power all i did was rewrite this distributing in a way the two the four to the two and the four to the x via multiplication and so we see we have this this can be simplified a little bit more because we know two to the fourth power according to our calculator is really just the number 16 and so in the numerator this two to the fourth turns into a 16 and my x to the fourth remains as is in the denominator i have 81 and that's as simple as this one gets so we see as we move down the chain starting with one property of exponent we needed another property of exponents and we're going to see that quite often in this particular problem here i think we are ready now to go and approach this problem let's dive in 